Last time we looked at section 9.1, so a week ago now, and we started taking a look at some definitions of um, some different things of probability. We looked at, um, in particular, what was meant by an experiment, an outcome, and a sample space. We did some examples where we talked about what mutually exclusive means, and um, we had a list of probability, a list of probability and properties. So today we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to do some examples. So to start with, we're going to talk about a deck of cards. And just so that everybody is on the same page on a deck of cards, we're going to review some things uh, about them. So what colors of cards are there in standard deck of cards? Black and red. Black and red. Yeah, red and black. And how many cards are there? 52. There are 52. How many red? Took a little longer on that one. 26. And how many black? 26, good. There are how many students? Four. Four. And what are they? Clubs, spades, spades, and hearts. Clubs, spades, and Good. And which ones are black? Spades and clubs. And then the red ones are? Hearts and hearts. So how many hearts are there? Thirteen. Thirteen is right. There are thirteen hearts, which means there are thirteen clubs. Um, we have some different um, values on the card. I'm going to use the word values to keep away from using the word numbers because they're not all numbers. So of the value cards, what numbers do we have? Two through ten, actually. Yeah, two through ten are our number of cards. What else do we have besides the number of cards? Ace, king, jack, queen, there's four of them. What, which ones are considered the actual face cards? Jack, queen, and king. Ace is not considered a face card, okay? There are games that play ace high and play games that play ace low. The ace is not considered a, a face card. So if it talks about a face card within your, your book, they're not referring to the ace, okay? Um, so, so how many um, jacks are there? There are four jacks. How many uh, sixes are there? Four. There's four of every, every individual value card, right? And the four different cards are of the four different sins. Okay. So we're going to use those pieces of information and we're going to all right, so this says, consider drawing a single card from the standard deck of cards and determine which of the following are equally likely. That was interesting. I didn't really mean it. Oh. I talked too much, so it just turned wrong. All right, so we'll pick back up to this. All right, so we have um, one that says face card and one that says not a face card. What we're going to do is we're going to actually write down what the probabilities are, and then we're going to compare them. So some of these I know you can answer yes or no without actually having to write down the probabilities, but in order to justify my answer of yes or no, I want to see the probabilities. Does that make sense? Okay, because I can't see what's going on in your head, and you may just very well be guessing yes or no, and that's not at all helpful. So how many face cards are there? Total. There are 12 face cards. Ooh, let's try this. Base cards out of how many cards total? 52. And how many are not face cards? 40 of them. How did you get 40 so quickly, Brendan? Right, the easiest way to do it would be to subtract. If there's 12 that are face cards, then 52 minus 12 is the number that aren't. Okay, so any questions on those two probabilities first? Okay, now we're going to answer the question that's asked. Let me, oh, let me make, let me make one comment. If you were simply asked to find the probability, we would reduce at this point, okay? But we're not asked to actually find the probability. We're just asked whether they're equally likely. These are in a form that's already comparable, right? What makes these able to be compared like they already are? It's about the same denominator. So, are these events equally likely? No. Why not? Right. Not equally likely. Because 40 is bigger than 12. 
All right, how about clubs? How many clubs are there? 13 out of how many diamonds? How about hearts? And spades? So are these events equally likely? Yes, they are. Because they are equal in their probability. So like they come up this equal. How about black? How many cards are black? 26 out of the 52. And red? Equally likely? That's a 52. Yes, these are equally likely. How about a king, queen, jack, ace, even odd? Okay, so we're going to go one at a time. How about the king? Four. Queen. Jack. Ace. And if the problem stopped there, the answer would be yes, but it doesn't. Now we have even cards. So how many even cards are there? 20. Okay, so there's five even cards and there's four of each, um, each of them, so there's 20 even cards. Yeah. So you have 20 out of 52. How about odd? One. That's exactly right. That one throws things off. So, are these events equally likely? No. It's not even equally likely to get the even and the odd because we don't have a card for a value of one. Or we don't have a one, actually. All right. So, these are not equally likely. All right. Let's do another one. Um, uses a little bit different kind of a feel to it. A sixth class is composed of 21 men, 34 women. There are 22 education majors, 13 religious. 12 science majors, 3 math majors, and 5 English majors. Assuming that no one has a double major, if a single student is chosen at random, what is the probability that the student is blank? All right, so I think we probably should start out figuring out how many people are in this class. Um, let's start. So how many are in the class? 55. And the easiest numbers to add together to get that are what? Yeah, the men and the women, right? So there are 55 in the class. All right, so what would I do to get the probability of the female, of the student being female, if we choose the student at random? All right, so there's 34 females out of 55 in the class total. Will that reduce? No, it won't. Um, the only thing that 34 is divisible by is going to be 2 and 17. And the only thing that 55 is going to be divisible by is 5 and 11. So we're rattled up into it. But that means we're done, so that's good. Um, how about a science major? 12 out of 55. Again, not going to reduce, right? All right, now part C is a little different. C says an English major or a religion major. Okay, so where did 18 come from? All right, so we're going to take the 13 religion majors and the five English majors. And then it becomes very important, this last sentence here, that you probably didn't even pay any attention to, that says nobody has a double major. That eliminates the possibility of double counting someone. Because if someone were a religion major and an English major, you would have counted them twice. But we don't have that in this problem, so that's a good thing. All right, so what do we have, 18? 18 out of 55. All right, D says neither a math major nor a science major. So there's two ways to do that problem. Can somebody suggest one for me? Yes, and that is one way to do it. So how many math majors are there? Three. And how many science majors? Twelve. So three and twelve is fifteen. So there are fifteen of these which means how many of them are not math or science? 40. And this one will reduce, right? 8 over 11. Right, they're both divisible by 5. How else could we do this problem? Yeah. So we 
you could just add up the different majors that we are not referring to, the ones that are not the math and not the science. So we could go back up here and we could add up, let's see, what do we have? 22 education, 13 religion, 5 English. Did I catch everybody? And if we added those up, we would also get 40. I hope you do it. <laughs> yeah, so there's two ways to do the problem. What we did in this last step actually used one of the properties. You may not have realized it as you were doing it, but it used this one up here, it used this last property right here. It said if I want to find a complement that that is something that cannot happen, what I could do is I could count up the ways that it did happen and take it away from one. Now, it didn't look like I took anything away from one, but you did because you took it away from 55, which was the whole. 55 over 55 would have been the number one. So in a roundabout way, you're using the last property here to do that problem. All right, let's take a look at example three. A student claims that if a fair coin is topped and comes up heads five times in a row, then according to the law of large numbers, the probability of the tails on the next toss is greater than the probability of heads. What is your reply? That's a, that's a very short reply. You're not trying to see how it's going to be something that's 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 going to be something number of them that have already happened does not affect what's going to happen next. Okay? What else in the problem is sort of odd about the student's reasoning? If you think about it, I'll write down a, sort of an abbreviated what, what we just said. one issue. issue again it's not the bigger issue the one that Brendan said first is the real issue here because it really doesn't matter whether we had a large number or not it wouldn't apply but five isn't large <laughs> anyway so even if we wanted or were able to have a um, application of the law of large numbers this one wouldn't work because I've only crossed the one side times okay any other questions Okay, let's take a look at the next one. The following spinner is spun 100 times. Joe claims the number four will occur most often because the greatest area of the spinner is covered by the number four. What would you tell Joe about his conjecture? That means about what he believes to be true. What is the probability that four will occur on any spin? Brendan, me and you're being mean here, Stephen, today. I tell you what, he is wrong. Well, he is wrong. So now that you've said it, I don't want you to say why. Somebody else, why is Joe wrong? Well, I think you answered the last time too, though. Heather, do you want to give one? Yes, they're all 90 degrees. Okay, so the area with the spinner doesn't matter. Why not? Let's write some of that 
down. And like Heather said, and all the angles, all four angles, are 90 degrees. So the probability of landing on the number four is what? It's actually one fourth, because all four of them have the same angle measure. Is everybody good on this one? Good idea? All right, that's our last one in that. 